Hi there, everybody. I'm Chris Schmidt from Grayscale Gorilla, and this is part two of our conveyor belt series. In this one, we're going to be tackling a dynamic version of what we already made. Boop, here. So we've got this traveling along, doing its own thing, but it's all very manual. It's all keyframed and uh, splines drawn, everything. We're going to go and try and make this a little bit more for real. So the only thing we need from here is I'm going to steal maybe one of these, this conveyor belt rectangle, and let's go ahead and steal the crate. That's all we're taking from this old version. Let's open up a new one, paste it, and I'm going to zero out this rectangle. And now we've got that already rounded, and let's start right away into this new one. So first of all, we need to get another sweep going, but we're gonna do build this one a little differently than the last one. So instead of it being a rectangle with some thickness, if we're going to be running this with dynamics, that would actually be a lot more difficult. You know what, actually, uh, we're gonna do, I'm gonna throw in a little bonus thing in here. We have some additional methods we could do, and so we're gonna do a dynamic method. This is gonna be a relatively straightforward dynamic method. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a cloner, and we're gonna create a cube. We're gonna throw the cube in the cloner, and we're gonna clone onto an object, and the object is going to be the rectangle. So you can see we've got a bad layout on that again. We can go ahead and set that to even, or we can go ahead and set that to step, and the cube is way too big, T for scale, Scale it way down. I want some relatively small ones. And I'm going to go ahead and shrink this step. So we're gonna get all these nice little tiny ones. And that looks pretty good. And right there's where the gap is and it looks like it's separated pretty well. Love it. So we've got that going on and I can go ahead and grab this cube and let's go ahead and stretch it out on Z, X, Y, Z, nope, not Z. Y apparently, so I'm gonna stretch out on Y, so I'm gonna get a nice long one of those there. And now we can just go into our cloner and we can say, let's give it a rate of five, hit play. Uh, I'm even gonna say negative five because I like it traveling to the right. So now we've got those moving. All we would have to do is grab that cube that we're cloning and add a, a simulation tag or a collider body and we'll grab our crate and we're going to add on a rigid body. It's going to fall, it's going to hit this conveyor belt, and it's just going to be moving along with it. So already with this method, we got some advantages. I can go ahead and crank our timeline as long as we want to, and that's just going to keep on spinning forever. And we've got such a simple rig here. I could go ahead and copy... Um, actually, I guess what we should do just for the purposes of kind of this short example is I'm gonna put the entire kind of belt into a null, we'll call it belt, and I can copy and paste it. Now you can see we've got, oops, uh, hit E for move, and I, I, I made a copy of it, we moved it over, and I can be like, I want it to be twice as long. So I'm gonna go ahead and double the length, and I'm gonna frame forward once. And because we have our cloner set to steps, you can see it kept the exact same spacing. So now we've got one that's twice as long moving at the same rate. Does that make it go twice as fast? It does, okay, it does make it go twice as fast. So it would be as simple as clicking on the cloner and saying, okay, like I wanted that to be half the speed. So now it's gonna be more continuous, but then of course we could set that to positive and we have that spin the other direction. So this is a really straightforward way of making things kind of mechanically move the way we want to. And then you could even, if you want it to be dynamic, you could go and do this and then also be running kind of the textured version of it. And the texture version could look like the belt that's moving, but here's what's actually dynamically moving it. So um, we're gonna be using the other one, so we'll just do it now. I'm gonna go and create a constant grouping of these. So we can actually go and create a particle emitter, a basic old Cinema 4D particle emitter. I'm gonna tell it to have a birth rate of one, one. I want it to have a really long lifetime and I want to pretty much never stop emitting, just make big old numbers on there. And we're going to throw that crate inside the emitter and I'm gonna tell it to show the objects. And oh, if we just take this and move it up into the air a little bit. Uh, oh, also we need to get rid of all the speed, no speed, and the emitter itself will be zero, zero. So now there's one point in space and every little once in a while, it's going to pop out a new cube and it's just gonna keep on generating them and dropping them. Now, uh, based on the speed of everything, you see this may be a little bit too fast. And unfortunately, that is the slowest you can emit. I wonder if we could put in a null and trick it into doing every other one. Oh, cool. Actually, I didn't know if that would work, and it does. Like, it's emitting a crate and then a null, and then a crate and then a null. So it's a way of kind of cutting that in half. But you see this is actually working pretty well. It's spitting them out, 
and the crates are falling, and I'm going to follow the next conveyor belt, and then travel the other direction. Now, you see that we're actually getting, we're having some trouble where those are very bouncy, and especially here, look, this is going to fall over and then bounce, but you see it spends a long time sliding in that other direction. So what I want to do is actually select all three of our dynamics tags, and I'm going to change the, in the collision tab, we're going to get rid of all the bounce, so they're not bounce anymore, and there's going to be a lot of friction, 90% friction. So now they're going to hit an almost dead stop, and then when this falls and hits this surface, it's going to then tr continue traveling almost immediately that new direction. So we have complete control over the way these are working. Uh, we could also, we could keep a bunch of bounce in there. We could set a 90, oop, okay, 90% is obviously way too much. But we'd set them all to uh, maybe 55. Yeah, that's like a, a sizable little bounce. And you might want to be careful where they might like bounce off of the conveyor belt, depending on the way they hit. So I might as well talk about some of these details. And let's say we want a super skinny conveyor belt. I'm going to go ahead and um, make these only only barely bigger than the cube at, than, at, that they are. So something we could do to kind of, I'm sure that these are going to start falling off. I'm surprised more aren't. We can see that's off the edge. That one, <laughs> they're shockingly staying. But it's highly likely that, yes, that some of them will start falling off the conveyor belt. So something that's pretty cool is we can go and create a plane. I'm going to set it to a 1-1, one, one, and let's set it so it's in the proper orientation. And we can make these little blocker walls. So I'm going to grab that and hit T for scale. And actually, if, given the scene we have right now, I could make this, like, infinitely huge. But I'm just going to go ahead and make it, you know, just big enough to cover our current conveyor belt. And what we can do is right-click on it and add a simulation collider body tag. So now it's going to hit that and not be able to fall. Now, we don't want to see that, but I always sometimes you can forget it's, this is very important actually. It's very easy to forget you made something like that. If I just hide it, you could be like, "Why like later you're like, oh, I'm going to rotate that conveyor belt." And you're like, "Why is it hitting? Why is it not working? You forgot that that's there." So I like there being a reminder that that's there. So we don't want it to render, but I do want to see in the viewport. So what I do is I right click on it and we add a Cinema 4D display tag and that display tag we're going to set to be a based on a line mode so what we do is we can see right through it but you can see we get a distinct outline we know it's there and we won't forget it's there so now we've got that as just kind of a collider body i'm going to copy and paste it and we can make a duplicate of it over here so now these cubes will bounce all over the place and they'll hit that but they will uh, not be able to escape now an important thing to note on that is that we want to make sure that we put zero bounce we don't want those walls to be bouncy and we don't want any friction if one of our cubes happens to be leaning up against that wall we don't want it scraping along the wall we want to just glide along we just want an invisible wall that it can't escape now the reason i kind of set it up where there's only one set right there is like i said we could grab this and hit t and scale it up super huge and that would cover the entire scene but if we were to maybe even grab these and make them a part of that belt I can make a duplicate of these and now they're part of the secondary belt. So the secondary one, if we were to make these a lot shorter and now we can move these down kind of properly on that one and on this one, we obviously need to make them a lot longer. What's cool is we can go and grab this belt and do things like, okay, let's go and grab it and rotate it and put it in the proper position here like that. And now these walls won't interfere with these. So we're just kind of putting in some reasonable restrictions here. And now that that's falling at a more uh, crazier angle, it would be harder for these conveyor belts to be kind of snagging to, to properly catch them. The, the boxes would fall off and we'd lose them. But this is actually working really well. And let's keep in mind, we've got a nice heavy friction on here. So we have a lot of options. We could actually probably have these climb at a significant angle and these will travel upwards. So now we've got some very, very straightforward, controllable conveyor belts with dynamics, and they should run really fast. We got a bunch of cubes. The simulation of those is crazy fast. So I just want to throw that out there. And then keep in mind, you can do the roller pin the exact same way. They just kind of be visibly doing their thing, and you'd be, uh, you'd be ready to rock on there. Now let's go for our super fancy version. Um, I'm actually going to maybe I'll, I'll give this one a save. But, and we'll call this one Conveyor Belt 2, and let's immediately save another one as Conveyor Belt 3. Uh, we're going to continue from this one because we already set up a bunch of stuff that's going to be helpful. But in this one, we are not going to be cloning cubes onto it. We are going to make an actual 
working rig for these. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing we've got here is that rectangle spline. We need some geometry on there. So I want a nice straight line. There's a bunch of different ways of doing this, and I want there to be as low poly as possible. So you unfortunately have to make it editable. There's no perfect parametric straight line in cinema. But uh, we can grab a most spline, and you see that it actually creates a straight line. But I actually want the axis to be in the middle of it. So uh, we can actually grab this offset, and I can say negative 50, and it is offset that halfway. So if we were to make this longer, actually, um, I guess if we just hit T for scale, you know, see it's going to kind of uniformly scale. So that works well. I also, right now, it, it says the full shape. I don't want full shape. I just want to see a spline line. So now it's just a spline line going across. And now we've got that going. There's actually, and let's sweep it and I'll show you the problem. If we grab these and sweep the two of them together, uh, well, first of all, it's a wrong orientation, which makes it look really weird. But if we go to our most spline, it's a correct, incorrect orientation. But if we go to our simple, we have these different angles and we have to find the right one. The correct one in this case is going to be angle P. So if I increase that, you can see it actually rotates over. And then if we go exactly 90, then it's going to be perfectly lined up to just be a belt traveling around. But if we hit NB, the shortcut to C edges, you can see that we have a ton of points on here. There are so many points making this up. You see right here, there's actually 100 steps. So if I drag that all the way down, we can get the minimum that is two steps. So we get one line in the middle and then these other two. And that's, that's pretty dang low poly. But we're gonna be making an actual belt here. So what that uh, you'll see that we all of our polygon details over here on these edges, but we actually need even detail throughout the entire thing. So we need to grab our rectangle spline and change this from adaptive to something like uniform. Uniform works pretty well here. I'm gonna grab uniform, I'm gonna set up to something like 12. That looks pretty good. Not too many polygons, but we definitely have a little bit of detail. Now, immediately, if we're making this dynamic, we're going to need this to be caught by something. So we need these cylinders again. And actually, uh, I guess I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, nah, we'll make it from scratch. We'll make a cylinder. I'm going to rotate it down uh, on Z. And we'll even do the same thing. I want to be able to see them spinning. So I'm going to make a duplicate of, mm, you know what? I don't care about the spinning that way. We already, we'll, we'll be able to tell it's spinning just from it rotating here. So we've got this cylinder here. And I'm going to go ahead and group it, Alt-G. And we can go ahead and move this over here. And I'm actually going to go a little bit shy of it. We don't, I guess it could be intersecting. We're going to go a little bit shy of it, just kind of eyeball it. And I guess we can make an instance of that. I'm not entirely sure, actually, if we can make an instance of that. But I'm going to make a copy of that over there. Cool. And now, what do we need to do? I'm going to, actually, I'm a little bit worried about that instance. So I'm going to get rid of it. We've got this one cylinder here, and I'm going to right-click on it, and we're going to make it a collider body, very similar to what we did what we did before. So we're going to go simulation, collider body. And we want that to be spinning forever. So now I'm going to use the grayscale gorilla signal tag. In the first part, we use keyframes, but now we're going to use the signal tag. So I'm going to grab signal. We already know from the other one that the thing we want to rotate is B. That's what we recorded before. But now I'm going to drag B onto signal. What's cool in signal is I'm going to tell it, in signal, in the signal tag, we are now controlling the B rotation. We're controlling the Z rotation. So I want this to rotate from, let's just say, 0 to 360. And it's going to take 0 to 90 frames. And I want to transition from one to the other. So I'm going to right-click and just make a linear spline. So if I hit play, you're going to see that starts spinning in one direction. And it's just going to it's going to spin one time until it gets to 90. But we can change the playback from once to additive and what that means is this will spin forever no matter how long the time if we can add more time in the timeline we could shorten it it's just going to keep spinning forever if it's spinning too fast we could lengthen the time or we could slow it down by saying the max here so i can drop it down to half the speed spinning uh you know spinning is going to take twice as long cool so that's working well so we've got that going uh we'll even call this roller and why don't I go ahead and copy and paste that? And I'm just going to set it to the negative value of what it currently is. It'll pop it back over there. Now, we actually want to make this belt dynamic. But what kind of dynamic do we want it to be? Well, we want it to be soft body. So we've got the sweep. And what's kind of cool is that we can, we don't have to make it paramet we don't have to make it editable. We can keep it parametric. So on the sweep, I can right click and say simulation soft body. Now, um, right away, because of soft body, I'm pretty sure we can just hit play, 
and it's a li- it got a little bit weird there, but it's not, well, okay, oh, it's being weird because of these uh, collider walls. I'm going to turn those off. So hit play, and it's actually not horrible right off the bat. You see it fell. It's actually holding on these cylinders, and it's a little, it's, it's, it's a little uh, floppy here, but it is, it is working almost right away out of the box. So we got to change some settings here. So first of all, you see that it, it's immediately, it's too stretchy. It's falling right away. So the setting primarily we want to change on that is going to be in the soft body tab is going to be the structure. If I make the structure 10 times as strong, it is going to not flop down anywhere near as much. Now you are going to see that it's a little bit vibrating. It's, it's twitching right now. And we're going to get rid of that by increasing our steps per frame. So I'm going to hit Command or Control D, get to our project settings. We're going to go to Dynamics, and we've got our Expert tab. And we do this all the time. We're going to change our steps per frame from 5 up to 10. And I'm pretty sure when we hit Play, that's going to super smooth that out. So you can already see that this belt is now catching these boxes pretty well. And it's even doing a decent job of rotating and pulling them up. Now, uh, definitely need to do some additional things here, though. First of all, the we haven't fixed the frictions here. So this belt and these cylinders have a bunch of bounce and not much friction. So I'm going to get rid of all the bounce and let's add a bunch of friction. So now these are very much pulling tight. Um, the friction is heavy. So that means these should be being forced to rotate in a much more consistent manner. So right there is good. We're, we'll have a lot less slippage. But now you see that we are. there's a couple of different problems we're getting. Uh, the main thing being is that this is still super loose. Now, we could do things like, there's actually a bunch of settings that somewhat fight each other here. Um, we could make the structural a lot stronger. So let's try uh, 10,000 instead of 1,000. And you'll see, once again, it goes a lot. It's not as far, but I tend not to like to make those numbers too large. This one's working okay, though. Also, we can increase our steps per frame even further. So just take a look at how far that's kind of dropping down, how much slack we have in it. We can go into our command, or into our dynamic settings, command or control D, and let's increase our steps per frame up to 25 and look at it now. It's not going as far down, but I want this to run relatively quickly. So we're going to drop it back to 10. And there's another setting we can play with, and that is going to be our rest length. Right now it's, well, rest length is what is the scale of the cloth? And right now it is the scale I started out as. It is that scale. But we can actually tell it to be smaller. I'm going to tell it to be 75% of the size that it currently is. So that means, and let's frame by frame it, it is instantly going to shrink itself down. And what that means is it's pulling itself very tightly onto these cylinders. Now I think I might have gone a little overboard. Let's do 85 maybe. But now it's going to shrink down a little bit. And now it's it's a lot tighter. It's very it's been pulled taut because it's shrank down and it's a, the belt essentially too small for the cylinders and you can see it's holding it pretty tight. That's not bad. That is actually working really, really well. Uh, now you will see a couple little problems. First of all, this is intersecting into this shape a little bit. In some ways that's not surprising because you see there's more segments here that's smoother around than that is. But we're gonna get around this a couple different ways. Now the main immediate way for these purposes is actually going to be to jump into the dynamics tags of those cylinders. And there's a really cool setting that we don't use very often. That's size increment. And essentially what that is, is it's going to increase the shape of it or decrease the shape of it. And it's essentially going to make it a little bit bigger around. It. It's like we're doing a big giant extrude on it. So if we hit play, if I tick that up one, I might have to take it up a few. I'm going to keep ticking it up and it's enlarging the size of that cylinder to be bigger so that when, even though this is kind of piercing through it, it's piercing through it in a larger, uh, in a larger shape. Now you will see that it's, we're still pulling tight enough where this is a little twitchy over there, which is never a good thing. Also keep in mind that as I enlarge this, it's making it even tighter than it used to be. So that's a, another thing to keep in mind. So maybe we won't, don't want that to shrink down quite as much. So I'm going to go to 95, uh, and that's like, okay, there you go. A lot less twitchy, and we can actually see it properly. It's actually, that's actually working really nicely there. But also, this is a, this is a fairly, uh, we're asking a lot of this belt right here, something that would automatically get rid of tons of the drag on this entire scenario here would be if we just added in more rollers. I can just copy and paste a roller. Let's put it right in the middle, and now put that in the middle, and now we've got 
extra support in there. So that's going to stop that from sagging down. And now there's one segment there and one there. So it's going to be a lot tighter there. But here's where things can get kind of fun. Uh, actually, oh, so that's all working well. So right now we have an infinitely thin belt. And that means we might see through it and it might pierce into this. Uh, just might not work as well overall. So, but we want to run our dynamics as quickly as possible. So we've got this very low poly belt, but now we want some thickness to it. So we can add the thickness after the fact. And we're going to add the thickness after the fact, as we usually do with a cloth surface. So we make our cloth surface. We're going to go find our belt, which I, oh, that's not the belt. Those are colliders. Eh, whatever. Uh, I'll go find our belt, which is actually the sweep. I'm going to make sure it's round all the way. And let's go ahead and drop the sweep into the cloth surface. And of course, cloth by default is subdividing. We don't want that. And we want to start adding in some thickness. So now we've got some thickness on our belt, but that thickness is not being seen by the soft bodies. It's just kind of calculating afterward. So we get a nice little bit of thickness on there. Now I'm actually going to exaggerate the problem so we can try and fix it. So you can see we got a nice big fat belt here. But the problem is, is that these crates are passing through it. So what we could do is the exact same thing we were doing just a second ago with these cylinders. We could tell these crates, and right now they are falling pretty often, so I'm actually going to add in a couple extra nulls and slow those down a bit. Uh, and I guess maybe I want that to be first. So it's going to make a crate, and it's going to be a while before the next one comes. But I don't want those crates to collide with each other, but what we can do is grab that crate and then go to its size increment and start ticking it up. So I'm going to go tick, 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 tick. And you see its size increment is getting bigger and bigger until it's so big that it now looks like it's sitting on the outside of this belt and falling down. But we're getting nice, fast calculations and they're colliding. But you will see that that size increment is going to make them collide with each other in a weird way. So like if that hits there, so we don't have quite enough time to space them out, but you'll see that that is so big it's going to collide there. I haven't tried this and like, there's a good chance it won't work, but we might be able to, to go to the belt itself, go to this belt and give it a size increment. But I'm worried that that's going to change its thickness as well. It's going to change the way it's colliding. Uh, and actually that doesn't seem to really be doing anything for us. So it might be pushing it inward, uh, or it just might not work on soft bodies that way. So in any case, I guess it works pretty well with the crate. We would just want to make sure that we have enough space in between them. Uh, but putting a size increment of like 13 is doing a really nice job of having that sit on the surface of this. And also keep in mind that this we're exaggerating this pretty large because I, I want to show you. But you know this conveyor belt doesn't have to be anywhere near that large. It could be only like 5, and now the collision margin... Um, that crate only has to be five, and that's going to sit right perfectly on that surface. So cool, that's that's another thing that we've layered up on there. Now you still see that we're getting a little bit of slack down here on the bottom, but now you can go into almost like a tank treads kind of mentality. If I copy this roller and paste it, we could actually go and put it something like right there, maybe over here. Now I know it's intersecting, but I'm pretty sure it will recover pretty quickly. Like that's going to pop up because it's the, the shortest path of resistance. So that actually popped that up. If I were to copy and paste that, and oop, I copy and pasted the wrong one, copy and paste that, and set that to negative, then we'll get two on the opposite sides. What that's actually going to do is pull the tension up and then intersect with that one again, and it's actually giving it its tension. And these are all traveling. Now, those might be the wrong direction now. Yeah, these two are spinning the wrong way. So we would want to grab those and say that they're traveling negative 180 easy as that to change but now those are also helping it along and it seems like our collision margin has gotten a little big with these rollers so I'm going to make sure to grab the rollers and we're going to shrink those down do, do, do. actually yeah we didn't really need any on there so you see that that was uh, that way so these are properly rolling here but these two bottom ones those new ones are intersecting and that's because it is on the opposite side it's on where the uh where the cloth surface is adding the thickness on. So those do need a little bit of collision margin. So I'm just gonna add in like three or four and you see that's gonna pop it up. So it doesn't look like it's colliding with it. And now we are properly rolling this between these with a nice tight conveyor belt. And we could do that as many times as we want to. And I just think it's kind of really cool the way those layer up. And what's what, I mean, the most interesting bit here is that we're doing it a lot more for real. This is really dropping the objects there. It's really landing on the, the conveyor belt and they're moving forward. So if we just kind of treat that as a singular rig, I just want to maybe give you a few other hints, uh, little things, but we're almost done here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and group all of that cool new stuff into our belt here. Keep in mind that we could go and turn our colliders back on again. And those actually seem to be a pretty good size. We just have to make sure that they are not hitting our surface. We don't want, uh, because they would freak out. So uh, right there, that should be fine. But if I were to pull these down, it's going to in intersect with it. And you see it's going to mess it up. But this, you know, if they're in the proper spot, then it should keep our crates very well packed inside of here and they can't escape out the other ends so that becomes a single bit of a rig very nice i'm going to go ahead and copy and paste it so we have a duplicate of it let's go ahead and spin it the opposite direction this one we're going to move down even right there would be pretty good it's going to catch those other ones and now i just want to give you i guess i just remembered i wanted to show you some motor stuff as well but uh, i just want to show you another way of optimizing this a little bit was we've got these let's say you wanted it super clean you want these cylinders on the outside but you don't want these ones on the inside and even though they kind of look cool mechanically let's just say you don't want them so we're gonna get rid of those so we are even with all the really nice settings it's still going to kind of warp down a little bit well what we can do a little trick here would be to create a cube and we're going to do the same thing we're doing with those invisible walls i'm going to move this cube right here into the middle of that conveyor belt and we could make it a child but i'm just going to go ahead and do this and let's shrink it down. And I'm just gonna very carefully place that right there. And let's go ahead and copy and paste it. And I'm gonna make another one right there below it. And we could even make that one longer. And those become, and let's go ahead and make those even longer. So those become additional invisible collider bodies. So we can actually go ahead and steal our collider, bo car <clears throat> collider body tags from there. And remember, super important, these collider body tags are set to have zero friction. It's not slowing the belt down. And let's also go ahead and copy the display tags, because like I said, when you make those kind of invisible colliders, it's really easy to forget that you made them. And then when something starts breaking later, you're like, what is causing it? If you make them invisible like this, it's harder to forget about them. So now this belt is running, this, this friction is still what's rotating it, but it's falling down onto a, a very smooth surface that's up inside of it and below it, so those are not flopping down. So kind of an alternative method of making a dynamic, of dynamic cloth-based rotation here, but without having to deal with them flopping down. And actually, even having done that, you could probably do things like drop your steps per frame down to a lesser amount, and you know, have everything, you know, our calculations are gonna happen twice as fast now. So it falls on this conveyor belt. You see, even there it didn't fall down at all, and we got the nice rotation going. So all that working awesome. Super duper happy with that. So uh, no reason not to do it in this file, actually. Right now, we are con we are driving these forward with signal. You could do that also with a keyframe, but we're just saying those are collider bodies and they are rotating. So they are they are doing their thing. But we could say, you know what, let's not force them to rotate. Let's instead use the dynamic system all the way through. So I'm going to actually work only from, I'll even delete that cylinder because we'll just copy this one again. So we're working with this cylinder alone right now. I'm going to go to our simulate menu. We're going to go to dynamics and I'm going to make a connector. Make this connector a child of that cylinder and let's zero out its positional information. And it's a little, it's gonna be tiny in there but you can see that we have a little kind of drum and that drum is in the direction it can rotate so that's actually the orientation we want and by creating that i'm gonna put it inside here i'm gonna link the cylinder and by not linking it to anything else pretty much what we've just done is we've said that this can rotate freely along that axis but no other and it's not linked to anything so it's just kind of stuck there so that can kind of freely spin right now. And I'm going to temporarily turn off those invisible cubes. And what we should see is this is just going to kind of flop down. And you can see that it's holding the belt, but it's not doing anything. So, okay, that's fine. And keep in mind that that is, oh wait, actually this is a collider body. So I want to make that a dynamic object. So this is now a dynamic object. It can fall with gravity, but the connector won't let it. So you can see, see how it's rotating now? So awesome. So that can freely rotate, but it can't move. It can't fall away. So that's working well, but now we need to actually drive this with something. Actually, why don't we copy that roller right now? So now we've got two rollers. This one's got those new settings. I'm gonna go ahead and put it as a negative number, just set it up over there. So now this belt shouldn't fall and it really shouldn't rotate because it, it's not pulling it anywhere. But now we've got that going, we can put a motor in. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a simulate dynamics motor. So we've got a motor now. It should be in the exact same place as the connector. So I'm going to make it a child, zero, zero. Now we've got a motor. Uh, I put in that one. That one's fine. 
So what do we want? Well, we want to feed it an object, and you can already see the, the arrows are pointing a particular direction. So if we hit play, there is now a motor in that one telling it to rotate. Now, those are still dynamic. They still have nice high friction. Now, what's cool is that that one has a motor saying you should keep on rotating. And this one is just loose. It's just doing whatever. So this one with a motor is driving this one without a motor. So this is actually beha behaving properly like a belt. Keep in mind, once you're using motors, uh, there's important things here like our target angle and our torque. So right now, there is pretty low torque. And our belt is very floppy. Um, there's very low torque. So I wouldn't be surprised if after a crate or two were on here, it's not enough power. You see how it's like slowing down. It's really struggling to get over that hump. Once it falls, I think it'll start rotating quicker again. But there's a lot, there's a lot of weight holding this. Uh, there's not a lot of power behind this motor. It's a, it's a weak motor trying to go a certain speed. So what you can do instead is add a whole bunch of torque. So now if we add a zero on there, it's going to be 10 times as much torque. Now in this case, it's actually going to start spinning a lot faster. That's, but that's because it's so much more powerful that's getting up to its target speed a lot better. So we now have to make our target speed a lot lower. And you see even that, that like almost a tenth of what it was, it's still a decent clip. But, and we can give it crazy high torque. So now it's so powerful that it's almost, it's not, nothing's going to be able to stop it from rotating. Uh, it'll just keep rotating all the time. But the target speed is very low, so it's going to move at a constant rate, no matter how much weight we drop on it. And keep in mind that we still have all the options as far as grabbing that cloth, and we could, of course, shrink it further. We could say that its size is 75, so it's going to pull it a lot tighter. Should still continue to work, but, you know, when it's really tight, it's going to get kind of twitchy. I'm going to undo that, and keep in mind we can also turn back on our invisible collider cubes. Um, let's see, if we start that from the beginning, yeah, I think, okay, uh, that is working. Okay, well, it's working, but what's happening is those collider cubes are actually intersecting with what is now a dynamic object. So we just have to make sure that this one cube, this one, is smaller than those are, so it doesn't collide with them. So forgot about that. I'm also going to make these child children of that belt just so I know that they're part of that group. So now those should be kind of calmly there. They are spinning and theirs is nice and smooth. So as these boxes rotate over, that should hit there. This is still being spun by a motor. A motor is driving that, which is also rotating that cylinder. All the dynamics are essentially real now. It says, you know, we're simulating this now instead of faking it. I mean, we're simulating as much of it as we can. And these crates, when they fall on there, there's tons of torque, tons of friction, and it's smoothly flowing over this box. So I think we get complete, super smooth control over everything. Should behave exactly the way we want, we want it to. We've got all these invisible things to stop crates from not go, from escaping, going where we don't want them to go. And we just have a lot of power over having all this stuff go exactly where we want them to go. We could add, you know, make copies of these, rotate them around. Keep in mind, it is soft body. Things can slow down if you have too many things going. Um, some of the stuff can get really fun or ridiculous. Um, and then just for the uh, sake of example, uh, before we started doing this, you know, this super fancy realistic one, I was tinkering around with, uh, when we, we remember, we just made, uh, that dynamic one, but it wasn't based on the belt. It was based on a series of these. You could actually take those. And I was taking the rectangles, the rounded rectangles they were in and putting them in bends and bending them around a corner. So you can actually even get almost like an airport thingy type going where you get these are rotating around. And I don't, you know, we're not breaking any physics here. This is just the way they're rotating. And I think I have a ton of boxes pouring out here. So what's cool here is if you're not using soft body, then the dynamics run a lot faster. So using these does make it run a lot quicker. So by combining maybe different things of these different three elements, there are so many different ways you can combine your conveyor belts to behave exactly the way you want them to, make them look exactly the way you want them to. And even here we can get nice, super fast simulation going on, even as we're, uh, even as we're looking at it. And there's even some curves in here just by putting a bend in those. And uh, yeah, constant travel moving around. And just to throw out there, I do have two uh, giant traps in here to stop them from falling up the sides because they would definitely be falling up the sides from this spin. But pretty uh, pretty fun pretty fun conveyor belt stuff. Uh, and like I mentioned, and especially in our first one, keep in mind that you always have, and if you go and look at any of those really cool motion graphics pieces that I've been inspired by, and I know other people are, very often it's like, oh, a sphere falls down into this thing, and there's a contraption, and then it spits out a cube. Like, that's so straightforward to set up on something like this where that would be one spine just constantly spitting out spheres. And it, the sphere would hit the bottom and jump back up to the top. It'd go down the bottom, go back up to the top. And a different 
spline with a different object inside of a different cloner would be going from here and just timed to happen at, at the exact same moment. And it would look like the sphere turned into a cube, which then would do something else. So layering these things up and having just kind of fun with them and uh, tinkering around, there's uh, there's so many different different ways of combining this. And these, these kind of things are also very fun to do like uh, marble contraptions. So you could imagine that this could be Actually, back when the dynamics were pretty new, I remember making a marble contraption. There's like a giant Ferris wheel that would pull the marbles up to the top. But I, I wanted even that to be kind of real. So I just made a cylinder that was the motor and it was driving a belt that was driving the giant Ferris wheel to rotate up. So this can be implemented in lots of different ways. But just the idea of dropping, you know, product on here, dropping dynamic objects is a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and drop these and we're going to drop more crates. Boom. So, yeah, man, you could just tinker and tinker and tinker with this stuff all day long once you start uh, playing with the dynamics. <laughs> Even with these rollers and it being this tight, so many crates are falling that's become very heavy. I guess, you know, and there's always so many dynamic things to learn, but you could also say that these crates were not very heavy. You could go and give them a lot less mass or density, and then they wouldn't be pulling nearly as far down on the belt. You could also probably, as an alternative, say that the belt had very heavy mass, and then it would be stronger and wouldn't be letting them you know, push them around as much. Like, stuff just goes and goes and goes forever. Um, but, yeah, I think that will wrap this up. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in another Grayscale Gorilla tutorial. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks.